My name's Robin McCarthy. I'm the head of technical and production here at the Australian Chamber Orchestra. We're at Pier 23. So Pier 23 is one of the finger walls on the harbour underneath the Harbour Bridge. And we occupy level one and level two at the end of the pier. We have the Nielsen Theatre, which is what you see here. We have uh, the studio, which is a smaller sort of boxed room, which can be turned into a recording studio, or it could be a function space. And then we're privileged enough to have a harbour side large event space called the Belgiorno. The design process started, I guess, around 2016, 2017. Uh, the pier itself was always here. I mean, it's, it's quite an old pier, but the actual design process to repurpose this Pier 23 into spaces for Bell Shakespeare Theatre Company, Australian Theatre for Young People and the ACO started approximately 2016, 2017. The challenge we have is the hybrid nature of our systems means that you can essentially send signal anywhere through the building, but you can do that unceremoniously by pressing the wrong button as well. So it's really important that we communicate clearly the limitations and what you can do. And that wasn't always there at the beginning. We're getting to a place now where everything's really settled and bedded down. And we use Dante as our preferred audio pr protocol. And what's interesting about that is we're interfacing with different types of technology for different purposes. So for our amplified performances, we're using Dante for our DMB audio system. Often we'll take that feed as a split to record it. And that'll go into our media suite into Pro Tools. Now, in order to get into the Pro Tools system, we use Dadman software. So whilst Dante is absolutely our, our protocol of choice, you know, we, we have to have at certain instances ways to interface with that Dante because we use it for so many different purposes. We really do have state-of-the-art audio systems. We're using DMB Audio Technic. We're using ETC for our lighting systems. We have Source 4s and Robies, moving light fixtures. We have Shopes microphones. You know, we have really just the highest quality technology available to us. We needed a PA system of that caliber and that quality in here. You couldn't do it any other way because, you know, the quality of the musicianship and the focus of, of the musicianship, sometimes we do just a violin, a cello, and it could be one single amplified instrument, but that needs to have a relationship with what's being played acoustically. So it was critical. The ACO will still do traditional classical pieces to kind of support their subscriber base and you know appeal to the kind of love of classical music. And what I love about them too is they do really great contemporary work. So for instance, we had the Moog Ensemble piece, which did works from Vangelis, like Blade Runner, works from Tron. They did Clockwork Orange music. And it was amazing because it was all orchestral with this Moog Ensemble brought out from the UK. Thankfully, the forethought to ensure that we had the right technology in place meant that we could handle that very easily. What's interesting is that more of that contemporary work will come because all we're finding is that people are becoming aware of this venue now. It could be an album launch, it could be something you know, more interesting and contemporary. It is coming through the venue a lot more. So it's really exciting. The fact that we're capable of handling that into the future of growth as well, because technology will just keep being used. Projection will be used, immersive projection, LED walls, you know, this, this will start to become you know, something that we see continually grow even in the, in the music scene as it does in the event world. And we have that ability to handle that. And I think because of that, that's what's gonna make the, the ACO Pier 2-3 venues very appealing.